<laughs> Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I got my zebra headdress mask done. In this video I intended to tell you how to paint your zebra and get all those stripes on there and actually I did it exactly backwards <laughs> so I will tell you how I did it but don't do it the way I did it. I think if I had been trying to find the slowest longest hardest way to paint zebra stripes I, I would win some kind of contest because I, I painted them like three times I did it backwards I did put the paper mache on there I used brown paper if you don't happen to have any brown paper just use newspaper it works just as good and I did use the tight bond 3 wood glue Again, you don't have to, but I do have a video out explaining why I um, decide whether I'm going to use paper mache paste or wood glue, and I'll put a link to that down below. I almost always use the wood glue on the theater masks, just because, well, it's, it's going to make a really strong, flexible mask, and I just really like it. You only have to use one layer, and it really speeds things up. I used wood glue for the brown paper, and then for the main, I used one-ply paper towels, with some cooked flour and water paste and I just scrunched them all up. You can also get a really nice fur texture with paper mache clay if you happen to have all the ingredients for it. That's what I did on my grizzly bear. One thing that I'm really happy with is those eyes because I didn't realize how pretty a zebra's eyes are. And they actually show up. The, the zebras are really well disguised because of the stripes. Once, once the stripes get on there, that's almost all you can see except for those eyes. Even from a distance, you can actually pick up on the eyes because of that yellow on there. I'll show you how I put these straps on. I'm just using white and black shoelaces to hold it on, and, and well, just because I wanna have fun with it. <laughs> I'm gonna try it on and show you. <laughs> I'm gonna actually tie it on right now, but that one, one uh, of the shoelaces goes in front of your ears, both sides, and then one goes behind the ear, and that actually balances. Because you can see that the nose here is way out in front of your nose, and you know gravity happens. <laughs> so this this strap behind your ear is actually what's going to hold it uh, from falling forward. And, be, and I, I thought it was kind of fun making black and white ones. <laughs> Let me show you how I painted it. And remember, don't do it like I did. I actually painted those stripes three times. One time would have been more than enough. <laughs> Let's get to it. I did put a layer of acrylic gesso on there. What I should have done as soon as the gesso was dry is give it another coat of just white acrylic paint. And that's what he needs for all of his white stripes. But did I do that? No. <laughs> what, what I did instead was to very casually draw the center of the black stripes over the gesso because I was thinking I would go ahead and kind of brush on the the black stripes and get them in the kind of convoluted curvy shapes that I wanted just kind of um, do a rough draft with my black paint and my big brush and then I would go back over it and clean it all up which was really silly <laughs> because cleaning it up took way longer than actually painting the stripes in the first place. Um, I did go back over those, you know, the, the real rough stripes and I did try to clean up all the edges with pure black. And then I went back over that after the black was dry and I cleaned up the edges and all of the white areas with just my pure titanium white took a really long time. Don't do it like that. Start with the white first, then very carefully draw the edges of your zebra stripes, the black ones, and then use your black paint carefully, <laughs> following the lines they just put on there, and then you'll only have to do the stripes once instead of three times like I did. The eyes were really fun to do, and I first put on a really watery mix of yellow ochre. It's just really, it's a yellow ochre with a whole lot of water. Then I mixed up some burnt umber and some burnt sienna, and I added a little bit of water to that. I didn't want a whole lot. I didn't want it runny, but I did want a lot of that yellow ochre to show through. And then after that was dry, I went back over it with a much smaller brush and made a whole bunch of little black spots all over it. I know you won't be able to see those black spots um, from on stage, but I, I do really like the way they look. 
And then, uh, of course, he had to have the black pupils. I tried really hard to get them both the same on, on both <laughs> both eyes. It's always the hard part for me. And then I added the white spots for uh, reflection lights. After the paint on the eyes was all dry, I went back over them with some fingernail polish. <laughs> to get a nice bright shine on them. And then the very last thing I had to do was get these cords on there so I could keep the zebra on top of my head. I actually drilled the holes before I painted it. I had hoped I would be able to use a just a paper punch, but I'm just too wimpy, I couldn't get it to work. So I got out my drill, just a quarter inch hole. And I bought a set of shoelaces. I got um, one pair of white, one pair of black. And the other thing I'm gonna use are these washers that I found in my junk drawer. They're, I think, quarter inch washers. The shoelaces are quite long, but and I probably could cut them, but I'm just gonna tie a really tight knot right here. Then I'm gonna thread it through the washer. Like that. This is really easy. I guess I put it through this one because that's the black stripe. Put it right there. Now you can see the washers, so I should paint them. I, I won't do that right yet. But now you have a nice uh, strap here, and I'm going to use the other one. I'm going to use my white one on the other side. So now it's all done. If you want to make a zebra, you can find the pattern at ultimatepapermache.com slash zebra mask. And if you make one, please come back to my website and show it off on the Daily Sculptors page. I would like to see how you do it. I know a couple thousand other people who would too. And I am really interested in finding out how you make the mane. I know that there's a lot of different ways to make a mane on a zebra. As a matter of fact, if you go to my website and just do a, a, a search for zebra, you can see that a lot of people have already made zebras of one kind or another, and the, the, every single person seems to put the mane on in a different way using different materials. I really want to find out how you do it, so be sure and come back and post photographs on the Daily Sculptors page. I really hope you'll come back and do that. <laughs> now go make something, and then come back and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.